treatment of uh, COVID. I had put a video a couple of days back, which was extensive, including the basic aspect. So a lot of friends requested me to keep a simpler version for the use of uh, all the doctors. So let's just review what is the evidence currently for the treatment of uh, chloroquine in the coronavirus disease. <laughs> I'm sharing the PowerPoint. Yeah. So, uh, as all of us know, there are uh, coronavirus disease has two stages. At the first phase, the virus enters the body, multiplies, especially in the lungs, which is called the viral response phase. Second phase is the it enters the lungs and causes the pulmonary phase. And the third phase is immune reaction. The immune system of the body. <laughs> Overreacts to the virus, causes a lot of cytokine storm, which leads on to the ARDS and probably to the death of the patient. Chloroquine has, uh, all of us know, has been for ages being used as a very good immunomodulator, especially in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. So it, is, it has a very good capability of inhibiting the cytokine storm. Whatever has been recently discovered is that chloroquine also inhibits the entry of the virus into the cell by inhibiting the glycosylation of the receptor. Also, it inhibits the multiplication of the virus in the endolysosome. People have tried, uh, in the, this is a recent paper on cell research, which was published a couple of months back, where what they did, they took up the co coronavirus and treated it with cell, which is a cell line, and cultured with uh, antivirals and also with chloroquine. What is the finding? Both uh, uh, remdesivir and chloroquine inhibited the viral multiplication inside the cell. This is showing the percentage multiplication. You can see here, chloroquine is uh, inhibiting around 60 to 70 percent of viral multiplication in the cell line. So indicating that remdesivir and chloroquine are almost very good efficacy in inhibiting the viral multiplication in the cell and can be infected. So people thought uh, we can, they went ahead. This is one of the uh, Initial papers which was published in Journal of Antimicrobial Agents, which is a French study where they included patients of along with who had PCR documented coronavirus disease and uh, excluded patients who had known allergy to hydroxychloroquine. It was non randomized control trial, it was an open label, non randomized clinical trial. They gave chloroquine to patients who were in one center, they took uh, patients uh, who did not. Uh, <laughs> belong to that area who belong to other, another area as controls though patients 42 patients are included 26 were treated with chloroquine and 16 were given control what happened of the 26 patients who were given chloroquine at a dose of 600 milligram per day or 200 milligram three times a day three were transferred to intensive care unit one died one left hospital and one stopped hydroxychloroquine due to nausea <laughs> 16 controls were from another area all of them were given standard of care and all patients completed follow-up the biggest and the most daring problem with the study is that the patients, these six patients were excluded from analysis. What they do, they excluded the six patients and analyzed 20 patients in the treatment arm with 16 patients in the control arm. <coughs> so what happens? In these six patients, hydroxychloroquine was stopped because the patient became sick. Why should a therapy should be stopped when the patient becomes sick? If it's an effective therapy, it should have been continued. Yeah, in these six patients, chloroquine was stopped and, uh, and uh, they were excluded from analysis. For example, those patients who became worse on chloroquine, uh, like one was transferred to ICU and one died, they were excluded from analysis. This is a huge, huge bias, which you need to be aware of when we analyze the final results. And look at the PCR negativity. If you look at the PCR negativity, very clearly you can see most of the patients uh, in the control arm, it was around 12%. Like in the day, uh, day one, as all of us will be 100%, from 100% uh, will be PCR positive, only Two, uh, two of the patients became PCR negative at the end of day six. So majority stayed PCR positive or they were positive for coronavirus. In the chloroquine arm, the PCR negativity was 57%. On the course of the trial, they also gave azithromycin to a few patients, the indication of which is not very clear. And six patients were treated with a combination of chloroquine and astromycin. And all the patients who gave chloroquine and astromycin turned PCR negative. So we, when we compare the PCR negativity from day three to day six, as you can see, only 12.5 PCR was negative in control arm, while 57% in the chloroquine arm and 100% in the chloroquine astromycin arm. Looks very promising. All the p-values are very significant. But look at the supplementary data of the control patients. 
as we, I told you earlier, they include only patients who are more than 12 years. If you look at the age of the patients at the control arm, they have taken a lot of young patients. So this is another blaring mistake in the study design and study results. So is it worth all the hype? The answer is a clear cut no, because of two reasons. One, they excluded patients who became sick in hydroxychloroquine arm and none in the placebo arm became sick. So somebody can tell that uh, the patients who are taking chloroquine are doing worse. That can be another interpretation, although there, it can be just by chance also. And controlled patients do not meet inclusion criteria as the, it's obvious from supplementary data and they have very small numbers and it's a non-randomized study again. So drawing any conclusion from this study is not possible. So based on this study, uh, President Trump told that chloroquine is a wonder drug, which is not the case. And uh, another study which was recently published in a journal of uh, Chinese journal, it is from China, uh, Fuda, Shanghai, they randomized uh, patients who are having coronavirus disease into chloroquine versus placebo. 30 patients were given, uh, included, one is to one. So 15 patients received chloroquine and 15 patients received placebo. What was the dose? 400 milligram day per day for five days. And they also looked at the negativity of PCR on day seven. <laughs> what is the result again? The PCR negativity is very, very high. 85 to 90 percent of the patients were PCR negative uh, on day seven, but it was same in the chloroquine arm and the placebo arm. Medium ne negativity was also uh, four to uh, comparable between the, those two the groups. CT progression was also comparable, and subsidence of fever also was comparable. What does it indicate? It indicates that chloroquine is as good as placebo, but very, very small study. And they had a very fast clearance of the viral clearance. So maybe all of them had had a viral, very mild disease. <laughs> One patient, the HTQ became critically ill, none in the placebo in the, became critically ill, again by chance. And all patients recovered, and none of them had any side effects. China started the issue is, as we know, it's a small study. There was no loading dose. And the conclusion is that HCQ, what we can conclude these two studies, HCQ is not a wonder drug for sure. But we need bigger studies with uh, 200, 300 patients so that we can analyze the results properly and the research study should be well controlled and uh, well randomized and controlled <laughs> side effects as we we have been using hydroxychloroquine for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis and lupus for ages relatively very safe drug except some patients can develop anorexia and nausea and skin especially pruritic crash is one of the side effects patient can have developed long-term toxicity we have very very rarely seen retinal issues extremely uncommon but in this case we did not worry because we are not going to use it for uh, three or four years we are maximum going to use for 10 days or seven days and another side effect which has been seen is exacerbation of psoriasis which again has also been we have seen and cardiac and neurotoxin which has been stressed again and again it's extremely unusual we have very very rare qt prolonged is extremely rare but when you combine chloroquine lestromycin uh, in more than 60 years of age you have to be very careful that is the only thing <laughs> So when compared to other antivirals and other immunomodulators, chloroquine is a safe option. So coming to the conclusion, so what is the really the role of hydroxychloroquine in COVID? Relatively safe, cheap. French study, as all of us told, is a full of flaws, so we can't uh, need better studies. Chinese study is uh, reasonably well conducted, but the problem is very low numbers and it does not support the use. So what should we be doing as a clinician who is treating uh, COVID? <laughs> what we can use is Maybe we can use chloroquine because it is cheap, less likely to cause harm, with a clear understanding that it has limited efficacy. With a clear understanding that it has limited efficacy, not a wonder drug. It can be used at a dose of uh, 800 milligrams. It can be given as 400 milligrams twice a day on day one. From then onwards, we can give 400 milligram HS or 200 milligram twice a day for five to 10 days. Uh, with a clear understanding, again, I'm stressing, with a clear understanding that it has limited efficacy. Once, maybe with the, uh, as I am told, there are more than five to 10 randomized control trials which are currently ongoing in China, uh, which may, once it is pre presented in major meetings, we'll have results coming out and then we can revise these guidelines and revise these recommendations. So currently the evidence is very limited and we have to be very cautious in the use of uh, hydroxychloroquine in the treatment of uh, COVID. Thank you.